I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Christians around the world have spent the past few weeks on quite a journey. We spent Advent preparing the way of the Lord, decking our halls, trimming our trees, making straight the path for the coming of the Christ child. Then Christmas arrived, and we rejoiced at the birth of Jesus. We exchanged gifts in honor of the gift of love that God has given us in his son as we embraced the spirit and generosity of St. Nicholas, and as we kept watch with the shepherds and sang with the angels. We spent 12 whole days celebrating the birth of Jesus, his incarnation, God's physical presence among us here on earth. And if you're like me, then you spent the snowy Friday, the Feast of Epiphany, clearing the way for a new season, packing up the Christmas decorations with more than a little sadness as all of the bright colors, the nativity scenes, the twinkling lights got stored away until next year. By last night, as we moved our last boxes into the attic, I felt a little bit like the three magi after a long cross-country journey. But wait, there's more. Before giving way to the winter blues, consider that we are now in a season of light. Epiphany is upon us, and this too is something worth celebrating. The magi have made it to the manger at long last. The wise men who have been following the light of a great star have arrived at the Christ child and are showering him with gifts from afar. In Louisiana, they are already breaking out king cakes, each one adorned with green, gold, and purple icing, and a tiny baby, Jesus, hidden somewhere in the cake for a lucky party-goer to discover. The season of Christmas brings tidings of joy and hope in the form of the birth of our Savior. But it will take the season of epiphany for the Son of God to reveal to us just what that means for humankind. Just the word epiphany gives us a clue of what is in store for the season. To have a great epiphany is to have that aha moment when all becomes clear, that moment in the Native American Lakota tradition when they believed that we find ourselves closest to God, what some people refer to as a thin place where the line between earth and heaven seems almost paper thin. As a wise man reminded me this week, an epiphany moment is one in which your heart sings Eureka, I found it. An epiphany is that moment when all becomes clear, when the light bulb goes on, when mystery is unveiled and all begins to make sense. Our lectionary will take us on a multi-week trek, marking the moments in which Christ is revealed to us, when God sheds light on who and what our Savior brings. Today we mark Jesus' baptism at the River Jordan when the Spirit of God descends like a dove and a voice calls from heaven, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. That is a pretty big epiphany if you ask me. Generations later, we can tell this story with measured emotion. But just imagine for one moment that as we gather around our baptismal font to baptize our three newest members into the body of Christ, just imagine the Spirit of God descending upon us and a voice booming from heaven and tell me you wouldn't fall out of your pew. If you come back each Sunday, as I know you all will, then you will witness more and more the light being shed on who and what this Christ child has come to do on earth. Just as Advent is a journey to Christ's birth, 
Epiphany is a journey through Christ's ministry and our mission as members of his body. You'll experience the miracle at Cana as wedding guests start to notice that there is something spectacular about this man named Jesus. You will hear the Beatitudes as Jesus reveals his radical vision for justice and love. You will see Jesus transfigured and God's light radiating from him as his divinity is revealed in great glory. This is big stuff. The power of God's light shining through his son as he embarks on his ministry is full of wonder and awe and power and mystery. The key theme of Epiphany as we endure our longest and coldest nights of winter will be the overwhelming and wondrous power of light. A light that can guide kings from afar on a journey across countries to encounter Christ. The true light which enlightens everyone, the light of all people, the light that shines in the darkness as God comes to dwell among us. A light that shines through each of us as children of God made in God's image. As I try and capture the essence of this journey during Epiphany, I find myself pondering a story that has made a profound impact on my understanding of the power of light to overcome darkness. This past year, a parishioner invited his friend to one of our small book studies to share her story of mission and ministry and community engagement in Memphis. Our youth pilgrims, in turn, got to hear this story as we gathered for worship in the Holy Isle of Lindisfarne this summer. And I'd like to share it with all of you today as we enter Epiphany together. The story is of a person sitting at her kitchen table on one of those moonless nights in which the darkness of a backyard feels as thick as a blanket covering the earth in blackness. From the warm glow of her kitchen, the woman gets up to let her dog out one final time before going to bed. Just as she opens the back door, the woman is overwhelmed by the light that is spilling out from her kitchen into her backyard. As she stands at the threshold, she marvels as a light shines forth from her house into the night, but the darkness of the night is unable to cross into her kitchen. The light conquers the darkness, not the other way around. As we renew our baptismal vows this morning, I challenge you to consider the vows that we will make in the context of our journey of Epiphany. We have the agency to choose, as the Magi's chose many years ago, to be guided by God's light. This will require an inquiring and discerning heart, much will to persevere and courage and a healthy dose of joy and wonder. With God's help, we have the power to spread light into the darkness to be powerful witnesses of God's love and to bring others into the fullness of Christ's peace and glory. But it will take a dramatic turn on our part, a turn to Jesus Christ, indeed, as well as in words. Listen carefully to the words of our baptismal liturgy and let them guide you, just as a star guided the Magi years ago. And in the words of Howard Thurman, let the work of Christmas begin. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. 
to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers, to make music in the heart. Amen.